That's true. Naked Palpatine. Um. <laughs> oh, oh, you think that one? Fresh out of the clone tank, nude Palpatine is my That's well, the first thing I think of when you say Dark Empire Palpatine. Welcome back to the Halo Expand Universe. I need a weapon. And if you just finished Halo Combat Evolved, I have some stuff for you. So, starting with, again, uh, you can find this on Halopedia if you don't have a physical copy. This would have came with Halo 2. I don't have a physical copy. But it is called Conversations from the Universe. It came with Halo 2. It was just a collection of little excerpts of conversations that different people had. And they took place in varying parts of the timeline. Some of it being before Halo 1. Some of it being after. You know. So this is after. Um, we have a Sanghealy conversation that's picked up. Um, and basically we have two elites talking about, you know, um, the humans may be scum. But they fight honorably. And they fight well despite being weaker. And some of the Sankili, the elites, don't understand why the Covenant, why their higher-ups, why their prophets have not, instead of eradicating all of them, have not offered a place, a rank, in uh, the Covenant for the humans, like they did for the Sankili, for the Ungoi, for all the species of the Covenant. Now, the reason for this is that truth knows the truth, um, that the, you know, great journey is kind of a lie, and the humans are reclaimers. They don't really want the rest of the covenant to know that, but it is, it is interesting to see that even here you have elites that are questioning things and wondering why things are the way they are, and this will be big important because the great schism will happen in Halo 2, but we'll get there when we get there. We have a letter uh, from Supposition, which is a lower-ranking prophet. Um, and he's basically talking about the Flood, because they showed up in Halo. Uh, is this a divine wrath from the gods? Or is this actually a means of us to finish the war? Can we, if not be allies to the Flood, not use them as a tool, as a weapon? So that was something we discussed. Letters, uh, or a letter from Truth. This is Truth talking to the Prophet of Mercy, talking about how regret may be getting too big for his britches, and he is a bit young and ambitious, and if the need arises, may need to be taken down. Now, this is actually interesting because if you read the Cold Protocol, there is already some sort of rivalry going on between a regret and truth. Uh, and then letters to Master Chief. Really don't have much to say about it. It's a little thing but you can read it if you want to. And then we have all the Halo 2 terminals. Or most of them. There are some that you would uh, read after, but uh, I don't have the numbers, I forget. But a good portion of these that specifically deal with the heretic elite that you meet in Halo 2 that the Arbiter has to kill early on in the game. Um, we get to see all these terminals about how 343 Guilty Spark met him. Um, and how he kind of convinces him that the great journey is a lie and everything. So if you wanted more about that guy before you have to take him out, check out those terminals. And then we have the title of this video. The Halo Graphic Novel, which came out in 2006 and was released by Marvel. It wasn't made by Marvel, it was just published by Marvel. But we have the first story, which is The Last Voyage of the Infinite Sucker, or Sakor by Lee Hammack, and illustrated by Simon Bisley, I think. Um, basically, Rotos Vodami. Uh, in, in Halo 2, we meet this elite. Um, there's a specific cutscene that I think everybody thinks about. Um, there's a lot of memes of it on, on the internet of a like Bible study where, you know, we swore to uphold the covenant, even to our dying breath. But uh, the guy that's doing the big speech, that's this guy. Um, and he has a really interesting relationship with the Arbiter in the games. Um, but here we get to see a story of him during the events of Halo CE where he was attacked by the Flood 
and how he got his jaw kind of messed up. He survived the encounter. He didn't get infected, but his jaw is messed up, which is why when we see him in Halo 2, his jaws are like, his manuals are broken. Um, so that's pretty cool. I also forgot to mention the Halo 2 terminals, you know, I mean, I always knew this, but in case anybody doubted, um, the Halo Legends anime collection is canon because he literally mentions and they show a panel of the Arbiter before the Arbiter title became a disgrace. So that's pretty cool. I love continuity. Um, second story, Armor Testing by Jay Faber. Kind of confused about this one, but there is a woman. I don't know if she's a former Spartan or former Marine because as far as I'm, as far as I'm aware, Normal people can't get into the Spartan suit, but they're testing out this new armor. Maybe this new armor doesn't require a Spartan to be in it. It could be anyone technically, but it's preferable for Spartans. I don't know, but she just tests out the suit and she's like, I got a family to go back to. I'm tired. I don't know. It was very short. It was fine. Um, I'm not exactly sure about the lore implications of that because it's not very clear if she's a Spartan or not. And Either way, I don't know if it matters. I don't know if it's a contradiction or not. It probably isn't. I'm probably just ignorant. But possibly contradiction. I don't know. But it's just a story about a new Spartan armor being tested. I'm sure a lore buff out there can explain to me why I'm wrong. I'm learning slowly. Eventually I'll have read everything. It's a much shorter universe than the Star Wars one. Um, the third story is Breaking Quarantine by Tutsumo. Nihai, it's, I think, a Japanese writer, but it was translated in English. I mean, I'm pretty sure his story has basically no dialogue. It's all just imagery. But it shows how Sergeant Johnson escaped the flood in the cutscene we saw in Halo CE. As for how he got off the ring, I thought that would show this, but it didn't. So I still don't know how he got off, but by golly... Miss Molly, he did it. And then we have the final story, which is Second Sunrise Over New Mombasa by Brett Lewis and Mobius. Um, this is basically just a way to show us that this city used to be thriving, used to be full of life. Because by the time we play Halo 2 and ODST, it's barren. It's devoid of life. You know, that's one of the somber feelings when you play Halo 3 ODST is the feeling of emptiness as the rookie travels throughout the streets and it's just empty and he's alone. Um, but it used to be filled to the brim of life. We learned about this photographer who helped make propaganda for Oni. And this is one of the first cases where you get kind of, I mean, it's not really harped on, but a rather insidious move by Oni, which is to basically make sure the earth populace thinks that the war is going well. To propaganda it as if everything's just going peachy. But we all know it's not. And then the Covenant attack Earth, as they do in Halo 2. And things are not pretty. Things are not nice. Um, but the photographer, you know, as small time as he is, he could get on a lifeboat to escape and, um, I mean, it, the earth's in trouble in general, but currently the city's being attacked. But he's like, mm, well, I could escape, but there's this little girl here. How about I give her my laptop with all this information and stuff and allow that to get out to the public somewhere else and I'll stay. So he's most likely dead in New Mombasa. But it was cool to see this city that's such a big part of Halo 2 and ODST prior to everything, you know, and to see a little bit of the insidious, insidiousness of Oni and trying to cover up something so big, like, we know, whether you read The Fall of Reach or you play Halo Reach and you play Halo C, humanity is losing. Long before the Flood or the Halo or anything, humanity was on a losing streak. They were not doing well. They were getting pushed further and further back, and Reach was the biggest downfall. Humanity was losing the war. But gotta make sure that the normal people thinks everything's a-okay. 
You know, imagine there's some interstellar war in space right now. And we think our biggest issue is the election. Only to have aliens start shooting on us tomorrow. Like, that's scary. But we'll harp on Oni more after we finish Halo 3, as 343 would dive much further into that. But it is interesting, even here in 2006, we have a little thing where, I mean, it's not really harped on. Again, this is very much like the Fall of Reach, where, oh yeah, we stole kids. Whatever. But still, there are things shown here that could become much bigger ramifications for later. Anyway, that's pretty much it for that. Up next, I have Halo First Strike by Eric Nyland. Yes, the same author who brought us The Fall of Reach and basically shows us what happened to the other Spartans during the end of Fall of Reach and during CE. Till next time, guys. Let's finish the fight. Bye-bye.